fellow esteemed professionals and um, all our valued attendees. My name is Engineer Ido Ofiku. I'm a registered engineer in Nigeria, practicing in Nigeria, and I'm delighted to be presenting this section today. The overview, we are going to be looking at the objectives of these sections and then the competitive advantages of Proto structure over other software. Then um, as a cutting edge software solution, we'll also be looking at importance of achieving accurate structural modeling with uh, Proto structure. We also will look at our real world experience I want to share with you. And then um, we'll be looking at the live demonstration. Our aim is to provide you with first hand insights into the capabilities of Proto structure and its role in shaping the future of structural engineering. What are the objectives? Well, uh, the objectives of this section first is to acquaint you with um, a real world presentation, not a model uh, presentation, a real world presentation where we use um, the software. And then this will also, as much as possible, will help us to understand the intricacies of the structure and then challenges faced and during the design process and how Proto structure played the role. That will be part of demonstration. Then the next thing we are going to be seeing is the, our experience, just like I said, and then um, we introduce you to a real world project that serves as a foundation uh, discussion. Then we'll be, at the end of the day, we'll be able to demonstrate the modeling process that we use, even though uh, because of time, um, and this is as real as possible. So because of time, we might not uh, finish everything, but wherever we finish, I want to believe that uh, with your engagement, you'll be able to get the other, uh, the remaining videos. So I you know both Trackford and Protas software and LinkedIn, you can ensure you follow us and also uh, as much as possible, do visit the YouTube page. Okay. So why should you achieve accurate structural modeling with Prota structure? Accurate structural modeling forms the cornerstone of every engineering design project. It plays a pivotal role in ensuring the safety, functionality, and efficiency of structures. So here is why using Proto structure to achieve accurate structural modeling is of paramount importance in the design pro process. Number one, every structure must be safe and have structural integrity. So accurate modeling with Proto structure provides a precise presentation of a structure's geometry, load distribution, and behavior. This is essential for predicting how the structure will respond to various loads, such as gravity, wind, and seismic, seismic forces. By capturing these factors accurately, Engineers can um, design structures that meet safety codes and regulations, thereby minimizing the risk of failure or collapse. Then also, when you do your modeling with a proto structure, you, you can predict uh, analysis. So accurate models enable engineers to conduct rigorous analysis and simulations, simulations. 
This includes assessing the structural response to different loading conditions, understanding potential failure modes, and evaluating how design changes affect performance. Such predictive analysis aids in making informed decisions and mitigating risk before construction. Also, with product structure, you, you can uh, optimize your structure and um, attain efficiency. Precise modeling allows for optimization of material usage and structural configurations. Engineers can identify opportunities to minimize material waste, reduce costs, and enhance structural efficiency. This leads to more sustainable designs that contribute to resource conservation and economic benefits. I'm going to show you today, you know, my design making, how I approach my own structural design. Most times I start from the, the minimum and then get to the maximum that I can get to in order to ensure that uh, my structural designs are not expensive. So also uh, design validation, structural model serves as a platform for validating design concepts before actual construction began, begins. Engineers can test different design alternative, alternatives and scenarios virtually, saving time and resources compared to physical prototyping. This iterative process ensures that the final design meets performance requirements. You see, with proto structure, most time it's very difficult for me to carry out a design and not have done maybe up to like five, six, seven models because I am going to try different models and then also try to see which one is most efficient. And then uh, of course, uh, with uh, structural integrity and safety, uppermost in my mind, Proto structure will help you to achieve that. You also collaboration and communication. Collaboration um, and communication with Proto structure, accurate models, facilitate effective collaboration among multidisciplinary teams, including architects, engineers, and contractors. Clear and consistent modeling aids in communication, reducing misunderstandings and errors during the design and construction phases. With proto structure, you can visualize your 3D. You can also share with other um, BIM tools, uh, softwares like Revit, and then with that, other professionals will also be able to appreciate. In this part of the world, you have often observed that you go to a site and then the MIE technicians will be attempting to do a chisel, your, chisel a column or chisel a beam in order to pass his pipes. You know, but with collaboration and communication, this can be mitigated in so many ways. Then, with proto structure also, you, you ensure regulatory compliance. Building codes with many international building codes and regulations stipulate minimum design standards for safety and functionality. Accurate models help uh, models help engineers ensure compliance with these standards. They also provide documentation to demonstrate adherence to regulatory requirements. So your documentation, your calculations will show everything bit by bit where your design complies with all the regulatory requirements in your structure. Then your documentation and maintenance. Accurate model serves as valuable documentation for the life cycle of the structure. They assist in maintenance, renovations, and future modifications. 
by providing insights into the original design intent. So with the detailed and comprehensive documentation of prota structure, you'll be able to achieve this. Then also, we talk of risk mitigation. With prota structure, you can achieve accurate modeling, which will ensure that errors or oversight in modeling can lead to costly rework, delays and compromise structural integrity. integrity. Accurate modeling minimizes the likelihood of this risk, reducing product, project timelines and costs. You see, sometimes with the functionalities and the capabilities of product structure, you'll be able to tell from, from the one, even right there, um, it's very possible to do a column that does not have support. Protal structure will be able to tell, this will mitigate a lot of uh, errors instead of going to sites. Is at the sites that uh, uh, engineers will now begin to make decision whether they should include the a beam or otherwise. Then the last there, which is very very important, is client confidence. It's all about perception in structural engineering uh, with the rates of of building collapse or structural collapse is very good to inspire confidence in the client and what uh, clients and stakeholders will gain at confidence in the project when you present when presented with accurate and visually compelling models demonstrating a thorough understanding of the structure's behavior and design in, in, and design instills trust in the engineering team's expertise. So <laughs> I don't know why what you are waiting for, that you are here to try a proto structure and try it legally. <laughs> OK, about the, the proto structure suit. So which has, because a lot of people misunderstand this, in fact, some, some people will even refer to it as Prota Software, yes. But Prota Software is the name of the company. Prota Structures 2022, in this particular case, we are awaiting 2024 in no distant time. It's been tested right now. And during the last session of this web webinar that we hold um, later in two weeks time, you are going to have a sneak peek into 2014. So, Prota structure has a central model, which is a Prota structure, which where you do all your modeling. Then Prota steel, which does all your all your steel connection designs and details, documentation, material, whatever you want. Then Prota details, which handles the reinforced concrete part. And then the proto beam, which ensure the collaboration. So now, in summary, proto structure is a one-stop solution that combines all that structural engineers do when delivering projects into one seamless solution for building design and documentation. With proto structure suits, you don't need to buy multiple software. That will handle steel, that will handle modeling, that will handle the detailing differently. No. So, first, it models a physical structure, your physical structure, real life. It will model it, it will run the analysis, then carry out the design, uh, produce detailed reports, drawings, then materials estimates, and can also share. Uh, all the information with other team, with other team members through other BIM software. All of this package, you do your modeling, you do your analysis, you do your design, you do detailing, fabrication, and then you share all in one, just in one software. You don't even need to install it multiple times, no. Unlike some other softwares in the market, whereby the one that will do the modeling is different. The one that will do the drawings is different. 
The one that will do the analysis is different. Mm -mm. Or the one that will do the steel is different. No. With protein structure, one of the, the core advantage, in short, is the fact that uh, they are not trying to rip you off of your money because you, after now, you can go and check all the other com uh, competitors in the market and check the different prices. Unlike the brutal structure suit, whereby by just buying just one, you have all this for, uh, you have value for your money. Of course, over the years, um, by God's grace and by the help of protest structure, we have been able to achieve so many projects. And if I, uh, shortly from now, we shall be exploring one of those projects and how uh, those are uh, exploring those features of protest structure and how it helps us to achieve the modeling and all the other um, stages. And not just that, also in the course of in the course of uh, supervision, it also helped us. Okay, so, and this is the project. Uh, it's somewhere located in Nigeria for some reasons and for, I may not want to tell you the location exactly, but on Google, you can see it's on Google, Google Map, uh, Google Earth. You can easily see it there. It's one of the projects and this project has gotten up to this stage. I designed this project. Then it was detailed, and then I had the opportunity to be um, the uh, consultant on the project up to this stage. Uh, it is okay. Let's even have a video. So now, I want to let's see the software in action. Okay, so this is the, I'll be switching between um, the, the softwares, that is both the CAD software and then the Proto structure I'm using. So for, in order to save a bit of time, I've already imported this. And let me tell you, there is no script for this. There is no, it's not something that I practice. So I am going to be as real as possible. And this is to enable you to have a first and an authentic insight on how the design workflow is. So I may not be able to exhaust uh, the entirety of this project uh, within the time that we have. However, um, like I told you, uh, it will be an opportunity for you to engage with us after now and also engage with um, Rota software uh, to be able to get many other projects like this. And um, at any time, if you want to ask us, we'll be ready to, to answer. And those ones you cannot answer, we'll be able to direct them. Okay. So this is the um, your protest your protest structure suit 2022. This is the interface, and then when you open last week, uh, there was a detailed uh, explanation on the overview. And when you check the protest structure uh, YouTube page, uh, you'll be able to get many other informations on some of this uh, interface we have,
the building set out, the modeling, the loading, the review, analysis, design, drawings, BIM, display, view. Within the scope of, this is why the, 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 the webinar is a series. So for today, we'll just be going straight to the modeling. So first, let me introduce you to the model. Um, I'll go back to this again. Okay, let me just use this. Let me introduce you to the mod to the model and how we got there. I'm going to be showing you um, the structural model. This is my template. The from the architectural drawings, I've done uh, a general for every structure. And you can see these are those um, uh, holes on the slab. Those slab hole that you saw if you uh, took notice of the video. Now, let me explain something to you. Uh, in as much as the project looked very simple, it was one very challenging time for me. And the reason was because before I visited the project sites, I got the soil report, the architectural drawings, which assumed that the project was going to be on a table land. And then after I did the first design, and based on this, the soil report, it was supposed to be a rough foundation with beam. And then we went to site. I insisted I had to visit the site, and then I traveled. And when I visited the site, I now discovered that between the front here, between this is the entrance, between the entrance and then the end here, number one, the difference is almost two meters. Now, in elevation. And also, the soil report said we have to go another two meters. So, what that meant was that by the time we get here, definitely we we'll have to introduce a retaining wall here, all around here. That is one. And then we we'll have to go that extent to two meters from here. That means we also have to introduce a retaining wall as well. This were purely decisions. And um, without proto structure, you know, this could have been another thing altogether, especially for the fact that there was no time. It's not something I could have started all over. That was one. Then the next thing, too, was that um, I discovered that the architectural said we have to do it like on a table land, a flat land, but the site condition shows otherwise. So all I need to now advise the client is that, okay, let's introduce a basement. If you took proper um, attention to the software, to the video that I played, the short video, you will also see. So the whole of this here is, is buried. The whole of this retaining wall is buried. So how now will I be able to um, achieve this within the limited time that I had? So I had to introduce this even without the, the architects, you know, being present. I have to advise a client on this and then we're able to introduce this basement. And of course, let me tell you, with protest structure, I can challenge you to bring your, your structure. I am not afraid. And I want to believe as an engineer, you have to also equip yourself properly. So now, so the next thing too is the fact that um, around this portion, this entrance was okay because the topography of the land was such that as you are getting here, the, the topography is rising. So 
We didn't need to create a basement around this area. This is the entrance. So we now decided to say, okay, in that case, we, we also put a retaining wall here, all around here, a shorter retaining wall, and then um, introduce, start our leap. The other decision that was taken there too was that for security purposes, we didn't want any person that will enter this car park to have access to the building. So what we now decided to do is okay, um, is to barricade whatever we have here. Sorry, um, let me, okay. Let me, so that, fine. So is to do what, uh, from the design, later on um, is to barricade whatever is there. So the car park is just within this area. Then if you come here, you must now assess the building. You must assess. Please, I am taking my time to explain this because you must explain, you must understand uh, the, the, the nitty gritty of the decisions taken for you to appreciate how really help you. Uh, this is not a tutorial kind of or a lecture per se. This is live demonstration. I am allowed to make all the mistakes here that I need to make. I'm allowed to do all the trial because in real life scenario, not what you see that uh, Everything will be ready in one hour, no. Yes, but proto structure will help you to achieve that within short. We are going to demonstrate that uh, as much as possible within the time we have. Okay. Um, it's all right. So now, then the next thing, the next challenge now was that all the columns don't have to start from the basement because we need to create enough space and also for the to make this place very functional because it's a hotel and um, with this introduction since the client is spending more money uh, by including basement then he must you know uh, make something out of have value for the more money that i will spend so the whole of this place, uh, the Tamit Entertainment Center, uh, they can use it for any other thing, even for clubbing. So if you come here, if you are staying in the room or you are passing through the reception, you can easily come here and then uh, access even through the lift. You use the lift to access or the staircase to access. So it's only these columns that are starting from the ground, the other columns, what? Um, some of the other columns are transfer columns, and that will also enable us to see how we model transfer. Transfer means that it's been supported that the vertical member, either wall or a column, is being supported directly by a slab or by a beam. So then the next thing there that we needed to consider was, of course, there, there is going to be a step design. Uh, the fact that all the fund foundation is not at the same level. And so what that means is that, that we have to design this at a level. We have to design this at a level. There is no need to fear, no issue. Proto structure have you covered so i think uh, uh, is there another thing i think that then the fact that this is a raft foundation entirely raft there's no beam at the foundation level is not a part apart from this area that we have to design part and since the inception of this project uh, Protoss structure has even gone better 
So uh, some of those uh, uh, features that were not there before, as at when 2021 was released, uh, those we are going to also um, examine some of those, enjoy some of those structures as much as possible. Like I told you before, please be patient with me and then let us uh, ensure we have the best of time. Okay, let's go on. So now, as a structural engineer, you would have prepared your layout. It's the fastest thing to do. Instead of going to, you can come here too and do your all your grid line and all that. You can draw your grid line, but that will not be uh, so effective, especially when the structure is a bit complex. If it's a straight, uh, simple, you know, structure, there is no problem. But where you have, you can see, you have all this, it becomes a problem. Uh, not like it cannot do it directly, but. Thinking ahead, they also provided you another feature that will enable you to add a standard referencing. So uh, standard references, sorry. So that will help us to what? With that, we will have to provide, produce the layout for the ground floor, which of course is the basement. Then we have the ground floor, which is somewhat like this. You might not see some of the columns here, for instance, because some of these columns are not starting from the ground floor. You also have a first floor to port. You can see this project has about 192 rooms. So it's not as small as you think. Let me close one of these. Okay. Then also ground floor to fit first floor. Then we also have penthouse. This penthouse is meant to take advantage of the decking here, since it's a hotel to make it like a rooftop hotel. We might not get to that point today, but let's do the much we can do within the short time we have. So we prepare the general arrangement, of course, that is not within the scope of this class, of this webinar. You will do your general arrangement and it's preliminary because after your modeling stage, with total structure, you'll be able to determine whether the column sizing, the preliminary column sizes, or even the beam layout, whether it is okay. Even this arrangement, you might want to check quickly. Are they okay? Or is there a better way of doing this? We put a structure, you don't have issue. It's all right. So let's go um, to our, our weapon as civil engineer, engineers. So here, in starting this project, what I now, the next thing I need to do, I'll just go straight. Of course, I can check the setting, do my setting, at this point of the modeling stage, or I can come there anytime before I run my analysis or design. There are settings that affect the analysis. There are settings that also affect the design stages. And there are settings that also, of course, affect even the modeling. For instance, you say, don't check model during membranes in section. So some of this might be Updated, but back and forth with portal structure at your disposal, you can easily assess all this from so many angles within um, the interface. The next thing we'll do now is to go straight. Let me even re remove this. Is to go straight. When you open this, the story reference, when you open this, the next thing that will open, the next interface that will open is this story reference drawing. So all you need to do is to add. It's very, very simple. Of course, there are rules guiding 
this. You must ensure there is no block. You must ensure there are no there are that what you have is um, a polyline and all that. This, if you check the Prota Structure website, uh, you, a tutorial page, uh, YouTube page, you'll be able to see some of this. Okay, so let's let's go on. So you know the first thing we are going to do is to go to our basement. Sorry, the basement is not here. So let me navigate. Okay. So go to our basement floor. Go here again. Remove. I didn't want to hide this very far, so I kept this here. So we want to look at the basement. So when you do that click, of course, you have to be mindful of the unit you are working on. I'm working with millimeter. You can also show it as a color. You cannot decide to display whatever you have, you know, um, imported. You can choose to remove it. You can also use color or otherwise. Sometimes you might not want to use color. You might also want it to show in your 3D, uh, which you are going to see. The moment you are done, you click OK. And this has provided the interface for you to work. So you can see our A, our B, our C, all the grid lines which are very important. So with this, it's not like when you trace, all you need to just do now is to trace. That is one option. But Proto Structure went ahead to do what? To also be able to allow you to import. And since you cannot import at ground level, you can also import, um, you know, when you're on the first floor. I am going to, Explain the story arrangement. Let me even delete it. Um, so that we have. A first hand information on this. Let it not. Uh, OK. OK, you can't delete because. Of the grid lines are already there, so. Uh, but when you open this. What you see is just two level. Both story zero and your story one, but I'm going to show you how this is achieved. Now, when you do this, you can now decide to import whatever you have, and with case-sensitive um, uh, layers, you might be able to suggest what it thinks you are. Because it is grid, and from the architecture here, yeah, architectural interface, sorry, from the general arrangement, my layout here, I have it as grid lines. I have other, you can see there are other layers. So, because of that, he's seen all of them. So it's up to me to do what? To, you know, it's safer to deselect this and check and say, okay, what is there is grid line? Click OK. Then I go to column and what I have there is column because that's what I have on the drawing. Then the next thing is my wall. So it also identify that. Then in order to be able to import the test layer, I also did this. So the moment you do this, you are going to, you will succeed in importing. But like I told you earlier, I don't want, I can't import this again because I've done that before in order to save time. 
But the moment you do this and say import, all your grid lines will be imported. But since I don't need this now, all I need to do is select the grid and then leave this selection on. And I'll click OK. It's telling me that all the polylines converted to column. This number of cycle. I have this. I click OK. See? So I already have a first stage. Can you see? Because now it's showing this as a column. There are also settings that you need to adjust in order to um when you are importing because if your if your the wall is within a particular uh what is it called now a particular size as wall this is 750 so but there's nothing to worry about. I can decide to leave this. And also, all I need to do here is to insert it manually. And then I to. Okay. When you are inserting your wall, you have the genera. Please. When you go to the YouTube page, like I've been saying, some of these are already explained. Please, this is a demonstration. It's not for me to start all this now because we don't even have time. Okay, so now with this, in order for me to do this accurately, I have to come here and put this as zero. I'll update and check. The moment is this, and this can be also achieved by using my arrow. OK. So you have enough materials on this to guide you. So the next. To make this 150, why am I making it 150? It's because my wall is 300. So they have way into the. It is the extension. The I is your start point, the J is your end point. Okay, so with this, I have this. But here, because from here to this point, here to this point is 187 because this is not at the center of this wall and because of that i will have to what adjust this to instead of 150 i will have to adjust this to 187.5 you can see and the good thing about protest structure is that you have all the time even if that does not work you have all the time to do what to adjust it until it is what it is. So for this one, I can easily measure it and check. This is one two one one two point five actually. So I'll go here, double click on this, and then uh, I think it's one one two point five. Okay. So I'll need to correct all this. It is important to note that it is important to note that what you imported is just a mere uh, a DXF. It doesn't have any information. So it might not always be 100% correct that everything you imported will come out 
the way it is. So it's up to you to be able to adjust this before moving ahead. So you can see. So we have this. And because it's going the left position, sorry, that is supposed to be minus. I'm going to be having 187.5, right? Oh, sorry. Sorry, that was not, is the extension I'm supposed to change. So this is supposed to be 187.5. And this also should be not minus, should be 75. Okay. So you are going to do this towards to correct all this. Let me save in the time and not adjust all of this. So let's see. Um, this is supposed to be 150. Even if the 150 does not fall in, you can always measure this and then see. It's 150. Okay. So that is one thing. And then if you check all the columns, they are um, they are all imported. You can see. I may decide to do a review at this stage to to ask the building model to check because. Your structural integrity starts from how accurate your structure is. So at every point, I, I may not even need to end to finish all my modeling before checking, especially if it's a complex model. The other thing too, I may want to check my columns to see that everything I have here, the eccentricity, is correct the dimensions is correct otherwise by the time you do your detailing it might come out as such okay so i am not going to take more time the next thing here now i know some of you might be wondering i will not treat here now please i'll treat this after now after this section. So let me concentrate here. So the next thing here is I will be wondering why am I having all these columns as short as this? Yes. Now, in this basement, because it's a basement that vehicle will need to enter, the first thing is that the height of the basement from the ground floor now the suspended ground floor will be 3.6. And uh, that is one. Number two, this wall you have here are not all to, up to this point, are not fully up to the ground floor level because the natural ground here is not up to that level. So where we have the full retaining wall is only around this area up to this point. Up to this point, we have it full. So because of that, I need to also play around with my story stories. And what do I need to do? First, at the entrance here, the level of the floor to the ground level to where you are going to assess the building is 750 millimeter. And so what I decided to do is to create a level as entrance. That is for ease of modeling. Because if I do everything, just one straight level, I may have problem. So after creating the ground floor, what I now have to do is my story operation. By inserting story, please, uh, you get tutorials, I will demonstrate all this. 
If you want to insert the story, more stories, you click on insert. First, you can either right click or from here, you can go to story operation, you insert. When you insert, you would indicate the number of stories. If I want to design 50 stories there, I can do it. If I want to add intermediate level, I can do it. So, and this will start counting from after the seventh floor. So if I say, okay, now you can see all of them. So it's not a difficult process. Please let me delete. It's not a difficult process at all. That is how helpful a uh, proto, proto structure is. Okay, sorry. It's now remove, it's delete. So it will delete all this. And delete all those stories highlighted. So, but the the problem we might have sometimes is when you have because after I inserted all this, um, what we have here is already everywhere. So, sometimes might be difficult to now begin to delete. But please let us not um, take all the time. So now the next thing I'm going to do is to do what is to create a level for the entrance and then create another level for the ground floor itself so i'll come here and then go to edit and from this edit i'll change the level of this to 750 and then to let me know that see this level is my entrance level into the basement all i needed to do was to write it basement entrance so that at every point I can remember. Then I have the ground level, which is back. You know, the total is uh, 3.6, right? So we have 750 plus 2850 equal to 3.6. So I have to share it. And you can always check the level. Then also, I am now telling that here, the first story, the story bottom level is 750. And uh, this does not have much role to play in the analysis. Okay, other, um, other instructional materials on the YouTube will also be able to demonstrate this. So, but be before I go further, let me. Now, um, take this again to say I want to show this at that zero level. So, in another 15 minutes, I want to give time for question. Please, um, so, the reason why I'm going through all this, just for you to know that most times uh, what you see everywhere is a bit edited. So it's okay to go through all these kind of processes for you to be able to appreciate the software the more. So this one, let me correct this too. Then you can say here. Yeah. This is it's going beyond this. If I right click, measure from here to here, it's 265. So, um, so this is two. It's two six five. Right? Okay.
okay. is 262.5. Okay, I'm not making any changes to five. Okay. Then for this one, it's not going beyond, yeah. I'm adjusting this to be able to demonstrate that it's okay from here to here. Let me measure this from here to here. So this is 250. Okay. So from here, we are coming here. Okay, you see, even this is not correctly installed. It's supposed to come from this level. So let me even do that. I'll come here. First, let me modify this. Say no. It's up to this level, sorry. And then this one will be zero. Stop from here. I'm mending all this on the way for a reason. So here I'll be able to have this separated from the others. Now let's move ahead. So the next thing I'm going to do is to go to ground floor now. And because I don't want to start all over with this, all I'm going to do here is to generate this to another level. I'm going to generate this to the next level, which is my ground floor. And I'll come here and I'll say generate to ground level and it will get generated. Okay. So from here, I have all this. But like I explained earlier, at my basement, at my entrance floor, I don't need all of this. I don't need the walls here. Because I only introduced that, sorry. I only introduced that for ease of modeling. Because up to this point, the wall can actually go directly up to the ground floor. So I'll delete. Delete all of this. OK. So all these ones. We are good, we are good, we are good, okay. So the remaining columns here yeah, are deleting. Okay, so now, very good, can save. Seven. So the next thing is to review. So you can see we're having all the columns, but the problem now, which is not a problem with proto structure, is that um, we have to take this to the basement level. This place, like I said before, I explained before, all these walls are not going up to that level. So we can delete them. This is just to tell you how I navigated through this basement because that's where my cons my focus is. I was able to navigate through the basement level uh, with the use of proto software. Okay, so this is what I have. So 
So the next thing, in order to get to this point, in order to get to the basement, what do I do? I don't even need to go far. Coming to the, the ground floor, all I need to do now is to select all the members here, one after the other. And by doing that, I'm going to go here and I'll go to column, just right click, go to members table, and then I'll check all the columns properties. And this will tell me the length of the story. So I'll have to instruct it to go by what? To length. So I'll click and do. I also do similar thing to the, sorry, similar thing to the word table and then come here and say go to levels and then I am good. So you can see it's taking a different shape. Have to be careful. So see if we have walls here, we should have deleted. Okay, so everything is fine. So this is the only wall at this basement level. Okay. Then the other wall at this basement level is also the other wall is also the the, the um, ramp, the wall for the ramp, which which I'm going to show you now too in a short while. How we're we able to achieve that. Because this is our entrance. Get to this point. Okay. So let's see. Here we have it. 275 or 250. Okay. Let me be sure. It's two to five, sorry. So I can select the two at a go and then go to properties. And I'll come here and say it's two to five. Two to five. So you have my you have my wall. Okay, sorry. This wall is supposed to be here, not there. So, but there's no problem. Uh, all I need to do is to delete this. So, now I have, this is where I'm going to be putting my ramp. So now I have my walls, but from the video, these walls are not at this level. It's seven from here to here is 1.5 above the entrance level. So if I add 1.5, 1500 plus 750, what I'll have is 225, meaning that I need to increase, take this wall by two to five. I could have created another level for that, but in order not to make, uh, create any confusion, I decided to leave it at that. So the next thing I did here is to select all this, um, select this, this now, and then all this level, and I'll go to, this and this uh, top J top and that's the delta Z. That is the difference in height. So because it's at the top, I'm going to put 115. And I click OK. The delta Z 
I also do the same thing, 1550. So you can see. Please, I should, I would have three more this and all that, but I want to maximize the time now. Um, this will be refined elsewhere. Uh, when you engage with the Prota Software uh, YouTube page, or you engage with us on our LinkedIn page. Okay, so this is the basement, and the reason for this is to throw light. Now, the next thing we are going to rush quickly because there's no time again, is to achieve our beams. So I'll go back again to take this to level two, to make it displayed. Okay, let me explain something. Sometimes when you import, this might not be, maybe what you imported here, let me, let me demonstrate. Maybe what, what you imported is somewhere here. Maybe it's not aligning with what you have. It's not a problem. We put our structure, rest assured that you can easily manipulate this to give you what you want. All I need to do is okay, is to come here and pick the intersection point and then take it to this point. Right? Then another thing that I want to explain quickly too, because these are basement walls, they are not uh, shell walls. All you need to do, you can also right click. Uh, okay, um, let me come here. Like you can model this as a shell wall, as a uh, basement wall, by coming here to say, okay, the wall model is what? Is a basement wall. Do you get? So if you do this, if you update, if you do this, sorry. If you do this, you can see the color is different. So, but do I need to delete everything I have now? No, I can see go here and right click, go to wall table. And then when I come here, I will see the analysis model, which will show me that is a basement wall. Because during the loading stage, it's going to be analyzed as a basement wall. I can do the same thing here. Uh, basement, I'll go here. I'm coming to the wall table in order to be able to select multiple um, with these features, you'll be able to manipulate your structure as much as possible. But since I don't want this to be designed as, as a basement wall, maybe a shell wall, uh, I can as well come here and do what? And say, okay, no, that this should be as default. Somewhere, a default setting has been made. Okay, but apart from that, the whole of this is going to be analyzed as basement wall. And that is yet one thing that total structure can help you do so that you'll be able to idealize your loading condition properly. So, um, winding up this, let me rush. So, when I get there, the next decision I have to make here. Uh, for younger engineers who might be in this platform, the next decision is now to determine how my beams arrangements are going to be. For this particular structure, I did them um, a 750. So you click on beam, and then you have 750. I did 750. Sorry, let me. Um, Measure again. Uh, let me be sure. This is 300. So, did beam. I'm going to just do few and then we'll move ahead and continue others after class. Okay, so this is 300. 
Now, a primary beam is that beam that will carry another beam. And with protal structure, you don't have any issue. So, all I need to do is, first of all, install all my primary beams. Since these beams are going to be carrying other beams. Please, I am not going to go further than this in order to maximize the time now. Okay. Okay, this is showing this because uh, I, I need to introduce columns here. There is no support here. You see, immediately it's telling you that mark is indicated that this is not supported. And that's because this retaining wall did not get up to this level. One of the purpose for this is to throw line light into this portion. So you can see this is one thing that protal structure will help you do in order to have an accurate modeling experience. All I need to do is to do what? Is to come here now and insert a column. Yes, I'm supposed to adjust all this, but within time, we'll demonstrate that after class. Check uh, Prota Software YouTube page days after now uh, for the videos and then all. Just engage with us on LinkedIn and then probably we might have some of the mission to you. So you can see. But now, before I go any further, let me test this, whether my structure, there's any issue. So I'm going to run this again to identify, you can see. It's telling me that column this overlaps with another vertical members, column this. What I usually do is to, what I usually do is to print this out because Protas Auto has made this very easy for you. You can load the log and then you start. So this will bring up this portion for you so that when you close, you now be able to identify those columns that are both short. But I won't have to start going looking for them one by one again. From visual inspection, I can tell that uh, this might be giving us trouble because it's seeing these columns now as though they are interfering. So all I need to do, and that's because I use the properties of the other column. So I'll just go here after selecting, either I go to properties or I'll go to wall, um, column table and then I'll say column tables. And then I'll change this to one because there's another vertical member there. Now, you see the level of this wall is not at this point. You know, we do a delta Z by 150. That means we need to shorten this column by 150. And this is a matter of your engineering decision, please. You don't have to do exactly, but in my own decision, I needed to shorten the bottom, the delta Z, that's bottom by one five, which I increase it to. And of course, this is not the size of these columns, but please let me leave it for now at this. So I can test it again if this was truly the problem. You see, it has reduced the error to two. And this error or this warning sometimes is not that the, um, the model might be wrong or whatever you are doing might be wrong, but it's up to you to cross check and be sure. So, but what is bringing that issue is this. 
because it's encroaching into this. But I'm going to ignore this now. I'm going to leave it, either leave it like this, or I can do this column, this wall from here to here, or and also from here to here. Okay, now please um let me go to the next element. Um the next thing I'm going to show is how to insert my slab. So I'll go here. Sorry, the secondary beam. So I can come here to insert, drag up to wherever I need to get to. All right. Uh, let me stop. Oh, yeah. It's telling you that new beams crossing over other beams. Do you want to split the new beams are supporting beam span? Yes. And the reason is simply because it's crossing through some beams. Okay, in these particular instances, there's a beam that probably, um, if you check the insertion point of this two, it might not be at the same level. Okay, you can see it's because of this. So he's seen this beam as one. So it's not actually, of course, it's splitted. So it's not supported by the beam. Is it that we delete this to insert a new beam? So it's possible we use the wrong insertion point. So you have to be very careful. So we have this, and then we are going to do this. Please take all your time to do your model well, so that when you start your analysis, you'll not be running into error split. So the next thing I'm going to do for want of time, I'm also going to still the same issue we have, but let me leave it. I'm going to now model our slab. And then at this point, I can do all this so that uh, you see the moment you begin to have this, of course, because we don't have beams. Please, I'll do the complete modeling of this step by step, do the video, and then you can follow up with it. Okay, of this project. So when you have this, the next, the last uh, point is my, uh, my, um, is to model uh, my ramp into this building. How do I achieve that? In multiple ways, is either I can use uh, my insertion point, is either I use axis region, but axis region will waste my time. And Protal Structure quite understood that very well and then decided to give me um, the slab edge. So I can easily come here and take my slab edge all through this insertion point, come here. And then I'll pick the slab edge to install. This is still not showing anything. It, it doesn't show anything. This is not a ramp, but I want a ramp. So uh, the last thing I'm going to do there is to go to modeling tool. Sorry, you go to modeling tool, go to our plane definition. The plane definition. We help you with the features that will create a ramp. A ramp is a slab, a slopey slab, or any member that is within two planes. So all we need to do here is to, we can still use the peak in order to have everything. So we have this, this is data zero, and at this point is zero. Mind you, we are 750 here. So at this point three uh, data, Z, which is a change in height, and this, 
and we have to define it as minus 750, which is a depth up to that level, minus 750. So immediately I have this. All I need to do now, I will right click and I say move members to plane. So all the members there by now would have been moved to plane. So you now see how you have your you have your slab, you have your this. Please, uh, in order to give us the benefits uh, to have, um, though I've exhausted the time, but it's worth it. I didn't want to script anything today. I want you to see how, in a real life scenario, how one goes to. You don't just come now and pick an element and then it's the same. So, but in subsequent, in, in subsequent lecture, in subsequent lecture, in subsequent um, videos, please, you are going to be seeing how this can be achieved. Um, for instance, we, we can also insert our hole and all this, we have enough, is it that you are using this to insert a hole on the slab? And you can use this convert to slab. Hole. So it's either you are using this or you are also uh, using the slab opening functionalities. So at this point, I am going to I am going to uh, stop this. Thank you very much for participating once again. Thank you. <laughs>